so just the skull. So who's going to mm. tell Ingri, bring Ingri up to speed on what what all she missed while she was in town? I think that's uh, definitely Mithandir's. I shot the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Also, we visit the the sage, and he gave me some weird pills, and that they uh, really fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> like Are next time we strangers. We went on a mystical journey, a mushroom aided yeah. mystical journey. Yeah, don't take candy from strangers. Yeah, I know. Next <laughs> next time we're taking E, I will cook it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. Start selling MDMA. Um, you all had varying degrees of success with it, so that was interesting. Is that where the dragon came from? No, no, no. it was just a, a random. We tried to save the dog in the swamp, and when we. When I flew over to the dog, the dragon just came out out of the swamp. Uh, is that an accurate depiction of it? Was it a black dragon? Yes, that yeah, was a young, was young adult black accurate. dragon. Yes, very accurate depiction of it. <laughs> Rising nice. up out of the swamp. Yep. And uh, we lined up for we lined up for uh, for its breath weapon and everything. <laughs> yeah, sure did. As you do, as you do. Yeah, it was, was the most perfect <laughs> lineup for a breath weapon I've ever. And, and I used that. I specifically used my knowledge to find out if it had a breath weapon that was a line, and then we still moved in a line. <laughs> and I moved into the line, so I. I didn't notice that I had moved into the line. <laughs> it was a perfect connect four. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Phil will tell you, you never know when to expect a, mm. dragon, a dragon in one of my yep. campaigns. They were, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to wait around for the Paizo <laughs> dragons where you're like, oh, we're almost at the bad guy. There must be there's a dragon nearby. But, yeah, they will pop up. <laughs> and well, they should. Anytime I see like a random encounter table and go, ooh, dragon, there we go. We'll move them up to the top for this area. Well, there you go. That wasn't the same dragon that was in like in the cave, was it? Uh, Remember one no, no, in? that was the heart okay. dragon. Yeah, that one's still, yeah. That's on different island. That's on your island, further north. Just making sure. I was like, because I remember you avoided that one. Like, yes. nope. <laughs> Perhaps yeah. wisely in that case, too. <laughs> well, now we have experience with killing dragons. <laughs> um, why don't you guys get things rolling by uh, rolling the D100 in the uh -huh. chat to see who gets the free reroll for the night? Won't be me. <laughs> by one. <laughs> Not me either. No oh, wow. Can Andy's I give it to Snorri? Wow. <laughs> no, no, you, you keep it. You can give it to me. You might need it. Line. We might need you to. Yeah, we might need you to hit big. <laughs> it's something like, shoot it again. <laughs> yeah. It's my luck ability for yeah. that. Your flexibility. Yeah. <laughs> no, I have my providential luck, and you I have, have that. Luck. Yeah. yeah. Keep it in your pocket. We might need it. You can do 40 for 40 or 50 points of damage. I can't. Neither can I, so. That's you and, uh, Ingri. Because when the dragon show up, like, oh man, we're not, you know, Ingri's not here either, so. Yeah. I was like, that we I, 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 I just said, hopefully he wouldn't, <laughs> she wouldn't grapple it. <laughs> Damn it! I missed a dragon slam? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Yes, uh, w Wolf is there as well. I said, yes, fortunately I had it pinned down with my mighty swords. Ah, right where we needed it. Right, yes. Lucian? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly! I love the way 
<laughs> you kept smashing your face against his wing. <laughs> <laughs> I was biting it. Uh, for I am fierce, my friend, and he claps you hard on the back. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> between between the swords and the fiery monkeys, it stood no chance. <laughs> fiery monkeys and fiery monkeys on them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Just, you get it to shoot. Them, to at least take one of the shots at it at a swarm instead of us. <laughs> we brought you his head. <laughs> I, I actually, all I wanted was like, okay, I wanted to cast like mirror image, and then I was gonna basically teleport behind it and just try to flank it and, and do as much damage as I could and hopefully when take out all six of my or whatever how many images I had at one time that was the plan that was my plan anyway <coughs> haste yep well Oof. one thing I've learned over the years is the players always find a way so yeah I figured you'd figure it out sooner or later <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but did you die? <laughs> yeah, just uh, blow it, whatever his brain's at with high explosive ordnance. Yep. Solves everything. That Pretty seems, much. Seems Certainly very, does. Very effective. <laughs> God, I love gun, gun chemists. It's so silly. Did kill a black dragon and a black skeleton. Yeah, that was a big one, too. Exactly. I have no idea what a black skeleton is. That was the thing on top of the um, um, cigarette. Were you there for that? I think that we was up... a wolf that session. Yes, Might have been it a was a wolf session. Yes, Ingrid's been suffering from uh, Montezuma's revenge <laughs> yes. in, in, in the Southlands. The quite, cuisine has not been agreeing with her. Yeah, quite a bit of dysentery there, apparently. <laughs> I miss everything cool. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even catch anything on my fishing trip. We should have to pack some modium the next time we come visit. Well, you do, uh, for some reason, you do just miss the uh, excitement there on the river as uh, you hear some of the locals speak of a uh, raid of uh, the lizard-like men, the Sipentua, who uh, came across the banks and apparently ran away with some people, abducted them. You are all allowed to, uh, of course, encouraged uh, and, and welcome to rest there in the town of uh, Teohuacan overnight. And the next morning you are awakened to a nice, uh, fresh, lush breakfast of uh, fresh fruit, you know, sliced uh, mango and diced pineapples. Uh, fresh milk and honey provided for you. And uh, after you, you rise and come out of your uh, uh, whatever it is you're staying in, the, the communal guest lodge, you find that uh, the high priest Mintok is waiting there um, in town for you, just seated, apparently thinking to himself. But he greets you as you all make your way there into the square, and he says, uh, I understand you go to see uh, what happened uh, with the abducted child from yesterday. Yes. What do you know of these uh, creatures that abducted him? Ah, uh, yes. Or the, her. The Sipa Tenhua are ancient peoples of these lands. Uh, normally they are content to live in harmony with us, with the Arcadians and with us, the people of Tehual. But there are different tribes, some more peaceful than others and some more aggressive than others. I would... We met some more aggressive ones on the way here. And we were forced to kill them. Yes, their raids have uh, be been coming more frequently in the recent moons. I would ask that you journey uh, just north of town to the El Comal River and uh, speak there with the fishermen. See what they 
witnessed on that day, uh, now these two nights ago, when the lizard folk descended upon our people and returned to me with what you have learned. And I can advise you further. Um, he will tell you a little more specifics about them. And the people in town are fascinated by the uh, dragon skull, of course, too. And the children dance around and sing. Three copper pieces for a look. Five copper pieces to touch it. <laughs> uh, I would Lucy. expect that from Lucy and not from you, Snorri. <laughs> no reimbursement for any children caught in the team. <laughs> <laughs> That's way too cheap for me. <laughs> I want to charge at least some gold. Snorri's actually being nice to them. You can't, you can't get it from them if they don't have it. <clears throat> it's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so right, let's find out what we can about these lizard folk. So he tells you, uh, yes, according to the legends of our people, when these strange humanoids first arrived on Tewal, a gargantuan sea serpent, part crocodile, part fish, part frog, swam at its vanguard, leading them ashore. However, it was Ixletheal who confronted the mighty beast and barred the monster from entering our realm. In return, the creature that was called Sipaktal attacked Islatol and bit off one of his feet. The enraged hero god immediately retaliated and slew the monster. He forever barred its charges from setting foot on dry land again. Islatotl curse confined the Sipatenua to the swamp and marsh on the island's eastern shore where they will always keep at least one foot on waterlogged soil. Uh, so speaking in a mechanical or descriptive sense, standing as tall as the average man, these humanoids have ridged reptilian skin, short arms with prehensile clawed hands, Vestigial armored tails, stubby, powerful legs, crocodilian heads with a slightly protruding, elongated snout, and a typical humanoid forehead with two eyes set just beneath their brows. Sipatenhua are muscular and hairless and possess remarkable dexterity for creatures who appear bulky and rigid. They are natural born swimmers who can hold their breath for extended periods of time, but must return to the surface to draw air into their lungs. Sipa Tenhua reach maturity between 14 and 16 years of age and must reach the venerable age of 100, although a handful of hale individuals making it all the way to 200. Um, and uh, the, uh, the high priest will, will tell you more. Um, uh, different gods worship different beings. There are some I know of the darker tribes who worship much, much older creatures. Mm, older than some gods. They're called elder beings. Elder gods. From the dark reaches of all that is known. Mm. Yes, you must proceed with great caution. But now the sun is up, daylight is burning, you must see what you can learn. Thank you. I know I have a picture here somewhere I can show you guys. I don't remember what I called it, unfortunately. Ah, 
there it is. This is a nice little piece of artwork. <coughs> Lizard. Yes, Spider-Man. <laughs> Dr. Connors. Mm -hmm. Your arm has returned. How would this encounter go if I went lizard folded? Hmm. Say that again. I, I, you look Probably go much look the same way. way. Probably wind up with a bunch of dead lizards regardless. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but not many lizard corpses because I'd eat them all. Exactly. Cannibalism is cool when you're green and scaly. <laughs> you lizard, lizard, lizard. <laughs> um, you guys can make a uh, knowledge, history, or religion check. Um, to see what you recall, uh, what other things you I recall, resident, though. I mean, he basically just the basics. Our resident shaman shall be into his mysterious yeah. spirits. And if you like, you can also make some diplomacy checks to ask around town um, here. And, uh, <laughs> and when you get to uh, okay. the riverside, you can ask around there as well. Sure. <laughs> We'll stick to the religion. There's my diplomacy, though. <laughs> <coughs> I'm laughing until I do mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I had to just have a great roll. I don't know oh, anything funny. about history, but I do have a nice face. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dragon skull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, roll to two. Good job. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. History. His religion is okay. Excellent. So, so Snorri, you um, you recall that uh, from the the few rare writings you've read of these things, that the Sipatenhua. Sipaten who are, have an affinity for crocodiles, though some of them can suddenly transform into other reptiles or amphibians. Okay. Um, let's see here. And primarily, they worship Ixlitiatl. The, the just in general. Not any specific cults or tribes or anything. Um, and diplomacy. Roll a uh, d6. Um, Mithander. Mithandir. Okay, so um, as you guys are asking around, heading out of town, some of the fishermen will tell you to be wary of a cottage um, if you go too far along the river. Once you get to the furthest most edges of the swamp before, before it transitions into the mountainscapes, um, there's a lone cottage. It's Known, rumored to be haunted, and those that go go near it sometimes don't return. Sounds like the perfect place to start. Yep, <laughs> so it's, it's on our must visit list. Was anyone else going to make a roll? You come out in terms of yeah, any of those knowledges or diplomacy. Or oh, we did. Okay. Well, yeah. 
<laughs> crappy. Just uh, just had a crappy roll. I had a twenty-one knowledge history. Um, and oh, okay. I didn't see that. Where did you? It's under. Uh, okay, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... <clears throat> Okay, so you know the Sipatenhua are a race of crocodilian humanoids who arrived on Tewal roughly a uh, thousand years ago. They predominantly dwell in the islands, marshes, and swamps. Although not overly aggressive, the Sipatenhua vigorously defend their terror. Okay. Um, so if you guys need to grab any extra supplies or anything before you head out of town, you can do that. Otherwise, you can start heading out to uh to the so, river so, side there so knowing that we have uh, we're probably heading to some lizard folk uh <laughs> establishment the next day the night before uh, do we have any opportunities to make any uh, water breathing potions or anything like that uh well i mean you literally the day before you guys had that entire adventure so that would have yeah. been an adventuring day today would be your day to... <clears throat> yeah but i'm talking about the night when we got back uh I mean, can you you can't craft on an adventure day can you or can you do partial craft i don't know <laughs> 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 Uh, I mean, me I could. It just, it just, it just says time. I know you time. can do partial yeah. crafting when you. Um, it just says X amount of hours. When you it doesn't travel. say anything about okay. having done it. Yeah, I figured we're back in town. We stayed overnight in the town. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I'm sure, you have a you have a night to craft. So the river is about uh, five miles out of town, looks like. What is it you want to craft? Is uh, Do you have access to water breathing, Michael? <clears throat> I do not. Do not? Okay, I don't either, so. Okay. We might have to go an alternate way. Uh, if you have high crafting, can't you make the mermaid's combs? I've never heard of that. Is it now chemical deal? Yeah, mermaid. Combs. Yeah. yeah, let's see if we can do Purple this. Purple comb. Although this might be a... Is it a, like a magic item, or is it a... Merfolk's alchemical? Ah, uh, it doesn't say. I'm going to quickly scroll through the alchemical list and see if there's a mundane solution to breathing. Breathing water, water breathing. Uh, it's category herbs. Okay. Never mind. I thought it was a craft thing. I could get the water breathing spell using a mythic point, but I'll, and divide it out. Because the way the spell works, you can divide it out like two hours per level, but you can divide it amongst uh, creatures. It says, oh, okay. Uh, spell so I can do that if we have okay. to. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Wild Arcana. Very nice. Okay. Cool. All right. So you guys can head north to uh, just out of town. Um, 
somebody can move the icon via avatar if you wish. Did we get a exact location on a map or anything like that? So you can to, they told you to, to go north and talk to the fishermen on the river. Okay. You see what you guys see where you are. Yeah. So yeah, the river we'll is just, yeah, it's just north on the road there. North to the river. Okay. And as you do that, you can make uh, some more diplomacy checks to see uh yeah. who you talk to along the way. <laughs> Somebody's glib is as Lucian is, and he has no plans. I'm I'm a solid six. Myth Andrew's a solid twenty. Oh, he's been killing those rolls. Excellent. Yeah. It's because he's the Dragon Slayer now. <laughs> All that confidence, <laughs> Help that charisma, charisma. It's just because the people don't see black folk here. <laughs> <laughs> Skin is so lovely. They say. That's what they say. Your eyes are so red. Your ears so pointy. As you approach the riverside, you notice that the tall grass along the banks waves and ripples in the wind, almost mirroring the. Uh, the occasional waves and ripples of the moving river itself from time to time. Alright, so 20 to the rescue. Very good. You, um, <laughs> so you speak to uh, some of the various fishermen that are out there. Um, you notice that there are there are fishermen, there are dogs, uh, there are some children that have accompanied the fishermen in, in some ways. It is very much like a family activity and profession. You know, it's very much part of their entire lifestyle. Um, some of them tell you that they saw a small canine like humanoid <clears throat> accompany uh, a Sipatenhua there in, in the swamp. Uh, just a few days ago. Now, you realize that this is uh, maybe related to, but it could also be different from um, the group that uh, descended upon the town. Um, you find another uh, local fisherman, fisherman Tlaktamichi, uh, who had told his... Uh, his wife and children wait for him uh, back in town as he went out to a, a secret fishing hole um, further um, further east along the river where he caught uh, a really really big fish and uh, and in doing so he uh, he wound up uh, seeing a band of Sepetis uh, uh, heading east along the river there so um, you know that they are uh, they're further out of town rather to the east rather than or I said to the east but I meant to the west or this way left of screen to the west I said east sorry wipe that from your mind all right he saw them further east along the road um, rather than to the north so along the river so you know that they uh, go further down the river um, you also hear um, the children speak of uh, <laughs> someone told them that uh, someone's raising the dead out in the swamps and that they shouldn't go out there but some of them claim that they found that they saw uh, bodies out in the uh, in the swamp. So yeah, so apparently there's a lot of things going on around here. Okay. 
while you're there uh, talking to the various fishermen, one of them named Katuma comes up to you. He's got two large catfish in a net slung over his back. He says, um, he says, yeah, these fish are so big, my family can only eat one. The other will spoil, but I would sell one to you for very fair price of only two cacao beans. Uh, can I give a look over of the, uh, the freshness of the fish? Sure. That'd be like nature? Yes. Or or nature. I do a diplomacy check and go, ah, is that the best price you can give? <laughs> of course, when it's about money, he can roll high. <laughs> I only roll at my diplomacy. I only talk well when it really counts. <laughs> well, it is a really nice fish. I mean, I, if you don't have the money I, or you don't have the beans <laughs> for trade, I suppose I could let it uh, go for can. one cacao bean. Ah, that's even better. Here you go. <laughs> yes, well, thank you. <laughs> it's just a painted rock. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and he says that he, he caught the big fish uh, <laughs> further to the east, which kind of um, which reinforces uh what the other fisherman was telling you about catching big fish down down that way. Okay, so what do you do? You have a general idea that they did come from I keep saying he's from the west. Um, so sweet. So Ingrid, next time you go what? fishing, you go to the west. Yeah. Or you stay with us and kill a dragon. Your choice. Yes. <laughs> or you you buy them from these guys with cacao beans. <laughs> so as you guys are heading back to meet with uh, Mintok and tell them what you learned, you see uh, two hairless dogs standing nose to nose, growling at each other, and they're intently staring at a bone on the ground between them. Throw them the fish. Let them fight over that instead. <laughs> Probably cut the fish in half and do you give, give them your fish, them. Lucian. What do you do? Sure, they got you the blade cut it. And then... I could catch. I could catch more fish. No problem. And I toss it to each dog. <laughs> Okay, so they gobble up the fish very happily and, and run off to a safe distance where they can drop it and turn around and chew and knock the, on it. The god of hairless dogs smiles upon you. <laughs> um, so we, bone we looks just a little bit weird to those of you that look that understand knowledge of nature. If you want to look at it closer. All right. I will take a quick peek at it. It's probably human. <laughs> no, it doesn't Literally. quite look human. It looks like uh, to you. It looks almost like a flipper from so some sort of larger aquatic animal, mammal. I see. I see a mammal. Yes. Hmm. This far inland, strange. Okay, so you make it back to Min Talk and you tell them that uh, that the uh, Sipatenhua seem to head out to the west along the river side, along with the river, and um, he he kind of nods his head and and then uh, lowers it grimly. Mm, yes, I was worried of this. I 
feared that they would come from the outlying tribes. They're very aggressive. They are. In my travels... We were to the south when we were attacked. <clears throat> In my travels, I have followed the the river not to its end, but to where it bends and leads away, staying, running along the edge of the swamp and where the mountains rise and take over the land of Tehual. And not far from the river bend did I find a valley there hidden from the eyes of my tribe and the journey there was was arduous and taxing but the wonders that I saw in this valley strange large creatures towering over man crashing through the trees and also there in its center a city a hidden city of stone and marble built by men who walked these lands even before our own ancestors mm, yes but I know too that there is there lies a tribe of Sipaten who are nearby and within the, this tribe cults who worship dark gods that would sacrifice man lay him on stone cut his heart out and offer it to dark gods in the stars mm, yes there are parts of these tribes that, that worship very dark things indeed from time to time they set out seeking to capture prey to offer to make worthy offerings to their dark gods mm, I fear this is what has befallen upon our tribesmen mm. then if you would travel along the river and find the valley as we call it the valley of the old divide hidden from man but I know it well you will need this he uh, retrieves a, a small bundle from one of his pouches. Uh, it's soft uh, leather skin. Let me make a handout. And he will. Okay, so he holds the bundle out. Okay, I will. Uh, I'll check it out. Okay, so you unwrap it and find. Hmm. Mm, yes, this is what I discovered in the city. In my travels of my youth. I'm not sure what powers it holds, but I do know that it points its way back to that city. And you see from where you are now, it's kind of pointing to uh, <laughs> northwest. Okay. When you make your oh. way into the valley, if you become lost, you may follow this and it will lead you unerringly back to whence it came. There lies the tribe nearby, just to just to the north of the city. You can find them along the river banks. Now 
you'd best uh, stock up and prepare yourselves for the journey. Do not attack them needlessly for great numbers would be to their advantage. How, how many days away is this journey, Sis Valley? Mm. You could reach it uh, within the day's travel by uh, sailing west along the river and then uh, walking to the valley entrance from where the river bends. And then once you, how, once you reach the valley... How long would valley, it take on foot? Once you reach the valley, it will... Uh, your journey will rely upon how well you can navigate the jungles laying within. Uh, on foot, it'll probably take a little longer, probably an extra day to walk over there. Uh, how would we get a boat? Uh, you just get one of the fishermen to give you a ride. Okay. In theory, yeah. Uh, here, take this. And he hands you another little little pouch made from like a yak scrotum or something. And you open it up. See, it's a pouch, right? Okay, you open it up, and it's full of little miniature seashells. And he says, you know, um, when you come upon the inhabitants of Taewal, you may show them my sign in the seashell and they shall recognize it that you are one with the people of the land and if they too are one then they shall respect you and if they do not then you best protect yourselves guys have any questions do you have any suggestions of how we could prepare ourselves do you have any antitoxins for sale mm, yes we could find you antitoxin yes we have antitoxin how many I have some I have four two antiplanks yeah I've got four oh. and two antiplanks oh. I've got three. That should be enough for now. Yeah. Right. I mean, the question now is, do we have time for this? I'm. I mean, I know they need help, but the our ship is leaving in one week. It sounds like we will be there a lot longer. No, it's a, it's a day there and a day back. I think we'd be all right. Got seven days to kill. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mentak, we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the time. I uh, did not know this was so late. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's head out. Uh, do we need anything else? Anybody want any other supplies and stuff before we go? I mean, you could it's probably not. buy you could probably buy antitoxin in the town. I would imagine. Yes, they can provide you with some you know, basic antitoxin in town. Sure. Something they probably make locally. Probably yeah, something so Mentox makes 50, as well. Fifty gold pieces a pop. I would imagine that wouldn't be hard to procure. Okay. Do you have any uh, ink? Yes. Yes, of course. Any piles of ink? They, he kind of leads you to the merchant area. He says, you know, here are our many talented merchants can help you here. They have inks, paints. We have many wondrous creations and crafts. On Sunday, on Sunday we have a swap meet. <laughs> Buying vials of ink, then. Ink is eight gold. All right. How much is a platinum again? 
Ten gold. Ten, Ten gold. Ten gold. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm down to yeah. two gold then. You need some money, Angry? I've got 906 gold pieces. Uh, if you're willing to shell out gold for ink. We have, uh, we got group fun. Don't forget, guys. Yeah. The ink is for something that may or may not work. <laughs> Perfect. We have, we have plenty in the group fun to, to purchase right. ink. I'm going to buy exactly two more vials of ink with the group fund, so 16 gold. That's exactly the kind of venture we support. <laughs> I'll take it out of the group fund. So while they're doing that, um, out of Mentok's sight, I didn't want to be rude, but I'm going to examine the Wayfinder. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm going to do uh, Detect Magic and then uh, Spellcraft it. See if I can do a proper identification. Mm, okay. Didn't want to look a gift horse in the mouth while we are right there with them. Uh, 32. Okay, so that's good enough to identify. So it's uh, it's not exactly a wayfinder. It's it's it, it is a similar technology, but it seems to actually be much much older than than the uh, Pathfinder creations. Uh, huh. It is um, an unerring compass, uh, so you get an aura of faint divination from it. Uh -huh. Um, and the uh, gold and silver compass has a single mithril needle that always uh, points towards its home. It was uh, something that was commonly used by the people that created it from wherever it came from. Hmm. So, according to what Mintok told you, it is pointing towards uh, the valley in that, in that particular city. But you don't necessarily have to go to the city. I mean, he, he told you there was a tribe nearby, so here, yeah. You just go to the, visit the tribe. Okay. See what the deal is there. That is what it is. Y'all ready to go? Yes. All right. Okay. So you guys uh, make your way back north towards the Ectolot Hole river a herd of loping deer crosses your path along the way and uh, you kind of see that as a sign of good luck a good omen of things to come anyway you start making your way along the banks looking for a fisherman who seems uh, to have a boat that would accommodate the group and to not be uh, engaged, you know, heavily engaged in something that could, doesn't seem to break away from. You do notice uh, a little bit further uh, to the east there, once you get away from the main main grouping of fishermen where it kind of thins out a little bit more, you notice that there are um, some of the children from, from the town are uh, congregated uh, on one side of uh, the river and they're over there dancing and uh, laughing and, and playing around. Okay. Let me change that music right quick. Something a little different there. Okay. Ooh, that's a slightly different music. Yeah. I guess uh, nothing's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are we in a boat or are we? No, this is as you're walking up. Oh, okay. I see us now. Okay, I saw the people on the other side of the river first. I need a better, more appropriate music for it. But... I don't know. 
Okay, so you see the the children, and they're kind of uh, <laughs> laughing and dancing and pointing. Wait, do I have everybody? I might have uh, angry one. Yeah, you have here. Wolf on there. Okay. Let's pull her over. There you go. Yeah, I need a little bit better piece of uh, music for this one, but we'll, we'll just go with it. Okay, so you see, uh, yeah, they're they're laughing and, and dancing. You see, uh, they're kind of looking and pointing towards something that's uh, further along the banks, but like kind of shadowed by the groups of trees and. Uh, patches of weeds and whatnot, so you can't quite see it from from your vantage point. Okay. In what direction? Uh, to the uh, to the left there, over this way. Okay. I'll shout out in uh, their language. Uh, what do you see? What is so funny? I'm gonna share your jokes. So <laughs> they're like laughing and like uh, putting their finger to the top of their head and like kind of spinning in place and and whatnot. And as you look over, you see a large silhouette of a creature that seems to be uh, doing something very similar to what the children are doing, and uh, almost as if they're mirroring each other. And you can kind of hear it crashing in the in the bushes as it uh, spins around and dances back and forth. All right. Would I have any idea what this thing is? Sure, you can knowledge check upon it. Oh, uh, what's the appropriate check, sir? <laughs> Anything but local, and I'm pretty good. All right. Mm, local, yeah. Could very well be local, though. <laughs> yep. Yeah, local. Is, Is it local? local? Yes. Yeah. Local. Ooh. Uh, I'll take 10, and it'd be a 20. Okay. Uh, it looks like a river troll to you. I believe it's a river troll. These children do not seem frightened of the river troll. You get a little Does bit that better. Seem odd to you. You get a little bit better view of it, and you see that it has tufts of coarse black hair growing out of porous grayish skin. Uh, oops, shit! I'm reading the wrong one. Never mind. <laughs> You see, this tall creature has a rough green hide, its hands ending claws, and its bestial face has a hideous tusked underbite. Yep. It's a big troll. Grrr. You can hear it kind of laughing now. We should leave it alone. They're yes. Jumping, sure. they're jumping <laughs> up and down. <laughs> yeah. Do we speak with the kids? What do you say to them? Um. Get away from this from the troll. Haha, <laughs> 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 he's our friend, he's funny. <laughs> Tell them to stay away from the troll. No, well, perhaps no, you he's... stay away, happy. Huh? <laughs> perhaps this troll has befriended them. <clears throat> Just make sure to use pepper and salt. Ah, <laughs> my friend the dog. <laughs> yeah, there's a children's dog running around there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, if the troll doesn't seem to be harming them, I don't see any reason to. Mun He's munching on something, isn't it? Oh, wow. Yeah, he sees you guys looking at him and he like turns and he roars. And goes, rawr, rawr. Well, as long as you stay on that side of the river, we're okay. Yeah. 
Orcs, I've, stay I've, away! And he turns and he runs crashing into the trees. Okay. Troll skulls are prestigious. Yeah. Sure we don't want to claim it? <laughs> he seems to have a drag We have a drag to fight the troll. Yeah, he did not seem to be harmful. He could have easily devoured these children if he wanted to. Or the dog, because it looked like he had a, some type of limb he was chewing on. Yeah. Probably something, maybe a deer he brought down or something. Maybe saving the kids for later. For, for dessert. <laughs> Yes. So do, do we So do do we proceed across the river? I believe we could get a boat up here though. No. We stay on this side. Yeah, there are several uh, fishermen around. You can even speak to uh some of them that had helped you before. Um for them some cacao. I will uh by the way, you know this is a river troll. Uh, and the children are taunting it or dancing with it, or what? I don't know if you have if these are your children or not. But uh... ah, those stupid children! We tell them to stay away from from the river troll. That is the we river. Call, we call him Org. He is a river troll that is calls the banks of the Ectomato home. Uh, I think he is he has only come up freshly with the rainy season. Uh, he must live further in the swamps. He seemed to be less violent than the stories of the other trolls that we've heard, so... Mm, yes, well, that is good. Much less violent. But there is no trusting a troll. They are trolls, after all. Yes, uh, but... With the children disappearing, best be wary. We are heading north... Or heading along the river to seek out the children that was the child that was taken by the. Uh, I, I, I'll try and say the name. I. I can't. Uh, can't the pronounce Sipaten it. Hua. Right. Uh, Lizard yes. folk. Ah uh, yes, and Deary, yes. Ah uh, yes, I. Uh, I did not see the child be taken, but I did witness uh, when the, those lizards attacked. Uh, mm, yes. Well, here let. Uh, we will speak to uh, Talkamachi. He he uh, has large boat and uh, is known to capture large fish, much like myself. But I must go and gather the children now. He uh, shouts out, <laughs> oh, "Hey, Talkamachi, Ta come and help!" <laughs> <laughs> they come to seek help, seek Andiri. He nods and he comes over and. Uh, seems to understand what you guys are looking for he says so uh, ah uh, yes the uh the they come from from further west down the river where it bends i can take you there yes thank you yes well you do a great service for our tribe by uh, by seeking out these lost children and i heard of your very brave exploits in uh, the cow macaque uh, and helping banish the coyote spirit. Uh, we could do nothing else but help. Ah, you are humble as well as powerful. Yes, very good. You are indeed sent by the gods. It is a boon. Uh, he appropriately yeah, shines your ass while we guys load up into his boat and stuff. Excellent. Okay, cool. I'll side. help him do whatever he needs to do. And we would head out. Feeling that troll is gonna make a, a another appearance. Hopefully not. <laughs> this fucking head of the troll. Should it get any ideas?
Okay, so it's only uh, a few hours uh, journey um, to where the river bends. So we'll see what you guys see along the way. More trolls. <laughs> <laughs> Some less friendly trolls. <laughs> More dragons. <laughs> For Ingri. <laughs> Yeah, so as you guys uh, near the bend in the river, you hear what seems to be a loud roar in the distance. Uh, coming from mm. the direction that your uh, compass is pointing to, by the way. Okay. Uh, how distant and what's from the opposite sides of the shore? or Like far in the distance. Like you just, oh, okay. You know. Like keep keep going? Okay. Yeah. Did, it, did it sound like the same roar from the troll? No. Okay. Something different, something bigger. Oh, wonderful. Something prehistoric, perhaps. Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched Godzilla this morning, the original. <laughs> Get your head off of me. <laughs> Do you feel the ape? <laughs> Okay, so uh, <laughs> as you guys are, are uh, leaving from the river bend, so the the um, the fisherman wishes you well, and he says uh, he says uh, I, I'm not sure if I could wait here for you, but if you wish, I could I can return. Um, um, you just tell me what you need, my friends. I will uh, I'll send the raven to fetch you. Ah, very good. Very good. That, that will work. Um, um, and he explains uh, where where his boat is and where his where his home is so you can find it. Okay. Whenever you're ready to go. Alrighty. And as you guys are... Uh, so the river actually turns to the north and you guys are going to continue to the west and you see there in the bend that uh, there appears to be a small dilapidated hut there on the river banks um, just to the north. Alright. Shall we moor the boat and check out the hut? This is the the bad mojo hut. What do you guys do? Shall we face whatever evil has taken over this hut? The thing you were warned not to. Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> of course! <laughs> I think we were specifically warned. That's the main plot of every horror movie. Yes. <laughs> you gotta do what you're not supposed to do. <laughs> Let's spend, spend the night. They are a brave <laughs> lot, as you can tell. We are going to claim the troll scroll. Might as well find something to decapitate. Okay, very good. A few undeads, maybe. All right. More of them. Haven't we faced enough of them? All right. Let me make sure you guys are over here. Oh, I forgot I had this on that map. Hold on a second. Um, you guys can uh, make some chit chat as you're walking towards the hut you're not supposed to enter. Uh, we're, not, I'll, we're, not, we're not entering. We're, we're just walking towards it. Mage armor and uh, bark skin myself. Uh, it's. 
I don't. Lucien, you still should have a potion of cat's grace from me. Exactly. I'm using it for, I'm saving it for when I need to be extra graceful. I'll drink it now. I think I still have one too. Mm. Let's see. Let's see here. I throw cat's grace on myself too. Age of reports can't get rid of haste. They could have been just mistaken or pulling our leg about this hut. Ooh, scary. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Vines, moss, and other vegetation wind their way up to the brick walls of a dilapidated structure with a sloped roof and swollen wooden door fitted into the building's side. Weeds, saplings, and shrubs grow unchecked on the grounds amid the brooks and streams winding their way across unkempt property. There's a dog following me. <laughs> Benji, I told you to go home. That's Lassie. The dog, does the dog is there, but it isn't there. <laughs> Uh, there's, no dog the the dog. there's no dog. Is Tommy's caught in the hut? <laughs> it's a, Tommy's, it's Tommy's he's in the hut. psychological remnant of your bad trip. Where's the well? There's no dog, but there is a cat, actually. The cat sees you and it goes... <laughs> it turns and it runs. Aha. Uh, perhaps this, uh, this is a dwelling of some sort of uh, wizard, the shaman, or something like that. And of course, since you all insisted in invading <laughs> this their home, <clears throat> here comes a welcome committee. Ah, yes. Yeah. Come, would you warm yourselves by my fire? She's speaking to you in uh, the Arcadian dialect. Ah. Uh, What do you say? We were led to believe there were evil spirits about. It does not seem to be the case. Evil? I'm snorry. <laughs> I have been called worse. <laughs> you must see the women in my homeland. We uh, <laughs> we do not have time we to treat with you for very long, but we will perhaps take a short break. That's okay. <clears throat> yes. I am called Whitetail. You are welcome. Come, my fire is warm. All right. I'll prepare go. your will. Uh, prepare your uh, will saves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> prepare your will. Harden it. <laughs> Snorri would like to bang one swamp witch before this whole campaign's <laughs> over, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, so she, says, so she says to Lucien, "Are you afraid to warm yourself by my fire?" I'm close. Some fires may burn, and some burns can last a lifetime. It's 83 degrees Fahrenheit with a 92 percent humidity. <laughs> How much warmer could we be? <laughs> Is the fire in the hut? Uh, yes. 
It's one of those hut fires. Let's go right here, like this. But we don't take any candy from her. Please don't take any candy from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ones that live in huts. Are you guys going to stay out there then? It's only Ori, Snorri, and Lu Lucian's just peeking through the window, and Snorri's the only one going in. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought it was it's in. Not, I, there is I not, wanna... isn't enough space for everyone. So, <laughs> is, is this right here something, or is it just dirt, or is that actually something? I think it's a fur bed or something. Yeah, okay. I think what. I didn't want it's to step water on the bed. I'm technically, I'm like, technically, I'm like right there. I just didn't want it to be like jump on the bed. Yeah, let's just get right on the water bed and start taking your clothes off. <laughs> she says, Somebody should be dreading it. Do not worry, dark one. The sun's rays will not reach you in my tent. It is warm and safe inside. Mm, welcome. I am Elskakato. You are welcome here. Bless you. Bless you. You see piles of filthy clayware and scraps of rotting food littering a disgusting table surrounded by four chairs. There's a straw pipe, tobacco scraps, and a ceramic bowl sitting atop the table. Uh, mounds of refuge ranging from heaps of dirt and sand to warped branches and Wooden containers of dried leaves cover almost the entirety of the floor, making it hard to walk across without scuttering through them. A moldy, decomposed fur rests atop a cruel bed stuffed against the far corner. That's where Snorri is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As far as huts go, I've seen better. She offers you some uh, soup to eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll eat it. I'll bite. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Snorri does. Like a uh, fortitude right goes. save. Fortitude save. All right. Get right up your alley, fortitude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's my my best save. <laughs> okay. Well, it's enough to stomach the soup, the the stew. It's it's okay. rather. <clears throat> Yeah, rather strong and hearty mixture, but yeah, you're able to stomach it. Okay. You wouldn't necessarily give go me a bowl. Go after <laughs> seconds. Yeah, <laughs> she'll offer you. Thank something. you for your hospitality. We were, we were led to believe that we would be uh, spurned had we come anywhere near your tent or your uh, your territory. Some were, some led us to believe that there was a foul spirit that lived here, but I see no such thing. Spurned. By me, no. All are welcome. Even strong warrior women such as yourselves. And she like rubs her hands uh, down your smooth arms. They're angry. <laughs> some of you, yes, you could use some more soup. She says, looking at the, looking at the drow and Lucian. <laughs> nope. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> uh, we do not wish to impose, but uh, what, what do you do out here in, all by yourself? Uh, this is my home. Where I live. One with the land we are. Yes. I live much the same as you back where we come from. Oh, yes. The same. Yes, we are. The same. Do you, uh, do you see the spirits? Ah, oh, yes, spirits. I see them everywhere. As do I. <laughs> Perhaps, uh, on the way back, uh, if we have time. Uh, the spirits could, are telling uh, me you should rest here. Be safe. Rest. Uh, Be comfortable. We, it is dangerous we do not have in the time. swamps. We are on a journey to seek, seek a young person who's gone missing from the town. We do not have time to stay. 
but we appreciate your hospitality and we are glad that we do not have to combat an evil spirit that lives here. It is good to know that there are good people living out here. Yes, good. Good people. We are. It is safe here. You will see. It is safe. Rest here. More stew. Would you like wine? I make it myself in the swamps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, uh... Okay, I'm just gonna do a, a quick, quick detect magic. <laughs> See if there's anything else going on here. So I, I, I'll literally. Poison. I just poison, start, maybe. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna take anything else. I'm not gonna she, drink or eat anything. Well, she else. sees you uh, doing somatic components, and she like grabs your hand. And she's like, "Oh, why you cast?" I just. <laughs> I'm I'm just looking for the spirit to uh, <laughs> consulting with the spirits. Are you nervous, Snowy? <laughs> she no, but likes you. <laughs> you must. Uh... Is this your yes. first time, Snorri? <laughs> in, fact, in fact, it is. It is. Oh, and uh, yes, maybe next time I will return on my own. Uh, too much pressure. There's three others here. Don't, don't mind us. Don't mind us. <laughs> what of the young person? On the way back, perhaps. Perhaps tomorrow. That's funny. <clears throat> yeah, well, she doesn't let you cast Detect Magic. She... But... Oh, okay. Yeah. I use a... Uh... <laughs> Never mind, uh, I, I actually don't have it. Never mind. Keep going. <laughs> so, so she tries to, like, grab you by your shoulders and lean you back on the bed. And it's like laying her head on your shoulder and stuff. Snorri. Uh, I'll just... Yeah, I'll... I'll... I'll tell her that we have we have to go. Oh, don't go. Take me, story. Aww. Sleeping with strange Aww. women is a bad idea. He talks a good game. Stay. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> so what do you do when she tries to? Yeah. She tries yeah. To I'm, I'm just. Back? I'm just gonna get up, if I can. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she reaches for you, but you stand up and walk yeah. away from her. Right. Yeah, oh. we we perhaps return on the on our way back if everything is well. It was good oh, to yes. meet your acquaintance. Well, don't worry, he will definitely return. I think he is enamored. Yes, you are. You are a lovely vision. I will keep the fire safe and warm for you, Snorri. Hmm. All right, we uh, shouldn't keep the fishermen, <laughs> fishermen waiting any longer. No, I'll, I'll uh, start to move on. He's like, oh, gotta go, gotta go. Gotta go. <laughs> this bitch is crazy. <laughs> Ain't they uh, old? So she lays down on the bed there, kind of turns away from you. All right. Perhaps he's learned from mine and uh, Lucy's <laughs> mistakes. Yeah. Lucy. yeah. Yeah, she's got. Uh, she's way worse than you. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if she lets us go, we'll we'll get back on the boat. Okay, so um, you head out of uh, out of her domicile there, and as you're you're walking, her you see her cat there in front of you, and as you look at it, it kind of. Um, opens its mouth as though to, to speak, but nothing comes out. And then it opens its mouth further, and its fangs and you know, long teeth are revealed. And then the mouth continues to open, like peeling back, revealing flesh and fangs, and uh, reveals uh. the raw, bloody skull right beneath it. <clears throat> and it goes... It sounds like initiative. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh everybody that sees uh the 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 cat's uh face um rolls back roll back needs to make a uh, will save cuz it's freaking you out okay. man I think I know what this monster is Oh shit Uh I'm going to Oh shit <laughs> I'm gonna use a hero point. 
here point let's see re-roll right yeah well hold re-roll on plus four. um yeah we'll uh actually it can only target one creature so it's not everybody so we'll just make it snorry there uh, since he was up front right. okay okay so you can save your hero point um yeah so snorry you failed is that your roll 10 no, you no 20. A 20. Okay, that was yeah, my fortitude. So 20, 20 save. That was my fortitude save for the soup. Okay. Yeah, very good. 20 What's saves. Uh, so, yeah, you feel like it's like freaking you out. And those of you that actually failed your roll, you're like, what is that? But uh, no no mechanical effect to it. But uh, yeah, then you can roll initiative. Okay, cool. Haha. Just want to point out, the last time we were in the hut in the wilderness and we had stew to eat, it was yep. there was the owner of the hut in the stew. Correct. And who who dove right in and didn't ask any questions? <laughs> Snorri. <laughs> the one who's always hungry. When offered hospitality, it's un- unpolite to refuse. <laughs> Oh yeah, actually, I was thinking of uh, just calling that, but yeah, yeah, that's this is a good time to to do that. All right, cool, cool, thanks. So yeah, five minutes. BRB.
Randy back yet? I'm back, Randy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I never left. Okay. Oh, okay. Act like you never left. Very good. Party order is going to be Lucian, Mythandir, Ingri, and then Snorri. Bringing up the rear. Lucian, what do you do? Identify. Uh, what knowledge would that be? It would be either. Do we got? Uh, would it be Arcana? Probably planes doing that. Uh, it is Arcana. Okay. Try. Identify it. I think I remember this monster from the third edition. Well, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, uh, but I uh, end up casting haste. Okay. Do you guys know how to put the haste marker on you if you scroll down? Um, first yeah. set to the running boot. There you go. And then. Uh, oh my. Rapier. You're dropping out slightly, Phil. Yeah, you might need to reposition your mic. How about this? Is that better? Boot. Uh, now you're a little echoey for some reason. Let me, let me change. Something. Hold on, I changed. I changed rooms. Doing a break. Oh, okay. You're not in the studio. <laughs> no, no. The but not, not in the sound booth anymore? No? No, no, no. Right. A little bit bigger room. But, but I always do. I had halfway through the evening, through the game. I, round 10, I switch. Usually I'm in the bedroom, one of the bedrooms, and then she goes to bed. And I go, and I move out. <laughs> so she can go to bed. <laughs> Is it still echo? If it is, I can always try to. It sounds, sounds okay. better. That sounds better. Could I drop out and come back in? Maybe it'd be better. I'll do that. No, it sounds okay. Yeah, okay. it sounds better now. Because you guys sound. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> uh. So yeah, so where were we? I derailed you. I'm assuming my 12 doesn't identify it. <laughs> I only rolled a 4. Uh, no, that identifies it. So you recognize it as a Crenshaw. Um, it is a magical beast. Uh, they're strange creatures that resemble large uh, but earless hunting cats, save that they can retract their fur and skin on their face to reveal a glistening skull and musculature beneath. Combined with its strange keening wail, this horrifying display is enough to paralyze prey and send formidable opponents running. Scholars have long debated the confusing nature of Crenshaw intelligence. While clearly more intelligent than mere animals, creatures seem to lack all but the most rudimentary language of snarls and yowls. And aside from the scare tactics that make them notorious, tend to behave much like mundane cats or wolves, even going so far as to occasionally be befriended by rangers or druids. Those who deny, deny Crenshaw's intelligence, however, need only look into their strange violet eyes or observe the ease with which they manipulate and outmaneuver their prey to realize their folly. An error few make twice. So it is a Crenshaw. You just barely identified it, so you remember that they bite and claw at things. You also remember now the skull face ability where it pulls its skin back, revealing its face and can frighten, um, frighten its target. Same. So, uh, maybe you could uh, charm it, Snorri. Keep it from. Perhaps it's just this woman's pet. Ah, 
that's true. You can charm it, then we can just be on our way then. It's a magical beast, I don't think I'll be able to. <laughs> I probably know more about it. End of my turn. But, but it's not my turn. Okay. So let's see if it's violent or not. If it's violent, then. Okay, sorry, I had to look something up there. Alright, so, Snorri, you feel something uh, <clears throat> claw at you from behind, and you hear a voice that says, Stay, don't go! Um, so, something invisible just raked you across your back. It looks like that's going to hit. Oh. What's uh -huh. uh, Snorri's AC? Uh, flat-footed would be uh, 16. Oh, God. What is that? <laughs> so you Looks get like a troll. Thing. Or you a get, hag. You get raked across the back. Um, yeah. I guess it was a little bit too easy for it just to be a mere... Cat. There are large size hags. <sighs> that there is. I bet you that's your that's your girlfriend, Snowy. Oh, the one that oh. was in the hut. She scratches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's your turn. It's your turn to scratch her back. <laughs> Five points, and you need to make a, a fortitude save as you feel. Uh. Uh, when her skin, her uh, claws break across your skin, you feel like the strength leaving your body. Oh, great. Okay. So you lose two yeah. points of strength. Two points okay. of strength damage. Damage, okay. Feel something swiping at you from behind. Stay with us. Uh, so, what is your flat-footed AC? Flat-footed is seventeen. Okay, so you get raked from behind for five points as well. You need to make a fortitude save. Defenses. Twelve. Twelve. That is going to fail. I'm a surge it. <laughs> He's like, I ain't fucking around with the strength damage. <laughs> Seventeen. <laughs> Seventeen. Okay. Seventeen will say. All right. That's right. I'm like, uh oh, if I can't help it anyway. <laughs> Stay with us, my pretty. Oh, she bought fins. Versus <laughs> your your flat AC, flat footed AC, angry. Oh my god, how many are there? Uh, my, uh, my flat footed AC is actually pretty good. Eighteen. Okay, but 
hit you for six points this time, and you need to make a fortitude save. All right. Okay, you save, so no strength damage. Six points, you said? Yes. Slashing damage from the, the claws. And they're saying, Stay with us, pretty. Juicy one. That's what they call you, juicy. <laughs> and the Grinshar takes a bite at Snorri, misses, and misses with a claw, and misses with both claws. Mithander, what do you do? Just to be sure, Snorri, this is no kink of you, is it? No, no, this is uh, beyond what I thought would happen. <laughs> <laughs> My friends, help me. Is it better than uh, what I expecting? <laughs> yeah. They, 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 did tell us, yeah. They, they did tell us not to show up to this hut. They did do that, but you all Yes, they did. They did. <laughs> What material is this hut of? Is it just wood or straw? Or... Uh, there's also brick and yeah, mud and stuff like that. So is the roof stable enough to hold a person? Uh, yeah, probably so. Okay, I'm going to retreat and I'm going to fly on the roof of this hut. Just to get out of their reach. And that will be the end of my turn. It's like a sloped roof, so uh, we're going to consider it uh, difficult terrain because it's leaning. Okay. Ingri, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to recoil, rage, and then charge at the one in front of Snorri with a knockout blow. Ooh, nice. And Mithander, I'm going to assume you deal with draw. And okay. if they're magical creatures, I get a plus one to attack and damage. They are magical beasts, yes. Ooh, nice. Oh. Beasts, yeah. <clears throat> These are monstrous human beasts. Sorry. The uh, cat yeah. was a magical beast, so I'm wrong page. Alright, so. 10 plus half my level plus my strength. So. 13 plus 6, 19. DC 19. Okay, hit, miss, miss. Are you just doing the one attack then? Yeah, just the one attack. Fortitude? Yes, I believe so. <clears throat> you knocked her out? Yeah, it says it right there. Whew! You rush forward and... <laughs> how, does, how, does, uh, how does she hit her to knock her out? Uh, I grab her by the hand, I pull her in, and uh, charge my fist and launch it as I pull her into it. So how long does that effect last? Uh, it rolled, so it's uh, five rounds. Mm. Nice, wow. Uh, How each many round on a nineteen points. Um, it does eighteen points. The DC was nineteen. Oh no, it does twenty points because it's twelve and then plus eight from uh, dragon stance. Very nice. Anything else? Uh, it gets to attempt a new saving throw at the end of its turn, though. Okay. Or at the. At it may attempt a new saving throw to end the effect as a full round action that does not provoke attacks of opportunity. So on its turn, it can do that. Gotcha. And that's it. All right. Story. Okay, so this uh, that guy's been neutralized. So I'll five foot step back here, and um, 
I'll do my hand of the apprentice with Gugnir, my spear. At the Crenshaw. Ooh, okay. Very nice. That will hit. Uh, for four points of damage. And I'll also do some checks. Uh, Monstrous Humanoid, is that still local? Or is that something else? I think that is local. How much damage did you do? 12 points? Four points. Okay. Hey, you spear it pretty hard. It's it's hurt bad. It's like... Okay, so this is my check for the Knowledge Arcana for the Crenshaw. It is... 22. Knowledge uh, Nature for human, Monstrous Human. Oh, is it not? Just, okay. So I'll do one of those as well. That I know. Uh, 20 <laughs> for these swamp witches. Not oh, 30, of, pardon me. Knots of dark, moldering hair spill over the features of these sickly, thin, green skinned crones. You recognize them uh, as green hags, terrifying crones known to haunt foul swamps and tangled forests. Green hags harbor intense hatred for all beauty and purity, making use of their very deceptive abilities. These crones delight in murdering innocents, unhinging noble minds, and debasing the pure of heart like Snorri. They are particularly fond of using disguised self to assume the forms of alluring young maidens and then seducing young men away from the, their lovers or families. In this form, they can infect such noble and upstanding citizens with all manner of debauchery and scandal. Some green hags prefer to reveal their true natures to their lovers at a moment precisely engineered to drive this man mad with horror and shame. Others drag out their dalliances and do what they, they can to utterly ruin the lives of the men they seduce before showing the broken shell that remains the truth. In the end, the luckiest of these unfortunate lovers end up being eaten by their green hag companions. For the unlucky, their final doom can be much worse for the cruel imagination of the green hag is vast. T typical green hag stands between five and six feet tall and weighs just under 160 pounds. Um, you you went, rolled well enough that you recognize this is a hag coven. Three hags of uh, any type can gather and form a coven to, uh, in to gain increased magical ability. Uh, whenever they are within uh, 10 feet of one another, all three can work together to use uh, various abilities. So, uh, what questions do you have? Oh, uh, uh, what kind of magic do they use? Actually, you probably just don't know how to hold the thing. Um, I was going to ask that, and if they had D DR. Got dark vision, um, no DR, but they do have spell resistance. Um, okay. Claws. Uh, Spell-like abilities, they have constant pass without trace, tongues, and water breathing. And at will, alter self, dancing lights, ghost sound, invisibility, pyrotechnics, tree shape, whispering wind, um, mimicry, they can imitate the sounds of almost any animal found near its lair. Um, and they have a, the weakness ability with sap strength, um, so it forces yeah. you to, to make a fortune save or um, lose your strength. Okay. Um... Coven abilities, um, they gain the following spell like abilities Animate Dead, Belt, Polymorph, Blight, Snow Curse, Clairvoyance, Clair Audience, Charm Monster, Commune, Control Weather, Dream Force Cage, Mind Blank, Mirage, Arcana, Reincarnate, Speak with Dead, Veil, and Vision. They, they all have to be casting at one time to get one of those spells off? Is that all how three the hags ability? must take a full round action to take part in this form of cooperative magic. So it takes all three okay. of them to do it. Okay. So there so, you go. And the, the Crenshaw, any special attacks or anything like that? Other than the, the reveal? and the... Bite claws and it has its skull face ability. Okay. All right, that's the end of my turn. Very good. So I'll, I'll shout out about, uh, yeah. Wow. When one of the sisters are down, these hags lose a lot of power. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming it's me. Lucien. I think you're up. I'm, uh, go I'm going to go to skills. Probatic. 
to here. Then cast. Image. Okay, that's going to provoke. Uh, you didn't roll quite high enough. Okay, the 16 wasn't high enough? Okay. No. Um, yep, so you catch a claw on the way. For seven points, you need to make a forward two save. Again. Okay. Is that a poison effect? Would our antitoxins help against that? Or is that like a... So this is charisma based save, so no. Okay. Probably not. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Like supernatural ability that something hags do, you know. Gotcha. Uh sorry, sixteen? Yeah, Six. sixteen saves. What'd you how do? many points did it do that time? What'd you do? Um well how many points did it take? That time? Seven, Seven points. I think. Seven twelve, so yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I got this wrong on the last. Um, what did you I do ca to I cast. I, I, no, I no, just. No, he just uh, rolled the fortitude too. Four, fortitude saves. But I did. Oh. Uh, I just cast um, mirror image. But that. Um, no, I was, I was in my mind making you fail already. No, that succeeds. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then. <laughs> and I have four okay. images. In turn. I think we had. No, maybe we don't have here. We've got three sets of icons in there now. But, uh. Now, into the fray, we go. No, you have four. Okay. Wrong Mythendia. Yes. <laughs> okay, so she is knocked out, but she's going to try to wake up. You say it's what, DC 17? Okay, well, she didn't get close anyway. Why do I have a four? All you thin bloods look alike to me. I just can't. <laughs> Wrong, Mythander. I was trying to figure out what you were saying. <laughs> There's a right Mythander and a wrong Mythander. That must be my good twin brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Mythander with the goatee. For mirror images. <laughs> I know there's one for mirror image, but I put something on there. The, uh, the red hag lady can make a four-round action fortitude save to wake up. She already failed. Oh, did she? Nice. Yes. Yep. Um, 17 versus your AC story. Uh, AC 20 now that I'm alert. No, actually, it's 19 with the charge, but that still misses. Okay, very good. Oh, good. Then her armor class goes down by two. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Forget haste is active, everybody. Yeah, I included that. That little bit of dodge got me out of dodge. All right, swing and a miss versus Lucien, and swing and a miss. Dice are on your side. Question: Um, is this what time of day is it? It is uh late in uh the day, uh dusk. Not nighttime yet, but the sun is starting to go down. Oh, okay. okay, so still full light, right? Uh, yeah, but it's going to be going to okay. low light soon. Yeah, but it's still full light. Okay, just want to make sure. Okay, so you take a bite and a claw. Now the dice turned a little bit. Ooh, and a nat twenty. Oh. Ooh. And who? On loot on the uh, snorey, you got a full attack. Oh. 
Getting the last claw mangled. was uh, only a 17 to confirm that. Okay, so it's just a oh, hit. Okay. okay. Cool. <laughs> Good, 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 good. Mm. So you take six from the bite, and okay. uh, the claw was uh, two points from the claw. So that's five altogether. That's my uh, false life spell done. Mythander, the right Mythander, good Mythander. <laughs> Is there a good Mythander? Mythander is just not the mirror universe, Mythander. <laughs> Dragon Slayer Mythand here. We'll take a full round action to make three attacks. First one goes to the blue hag. Okay. Uh... Oh gosh. Would a 12 hit her touch AC? Right. Yes, a 12 hits her touch AC. Oh, nice. That would be 11 points of bludgeoning damage, piercing and bludgeoning damage, and 16 points of fire damage. Then let's do it again. You're uh, shooting at the one by Lucian, is that right? The blue uh, the, one. The blue one. Oh, the blue one. Takes another 13 points of bludgeoning and piercing damage and 18 points of fire damage. Nice. Maybe that's enough to put her down. No, actually, she's not down yet. She's, uh, she's not looking good. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. <laughs> okay, one last attack on the blue one. Nine points of bludgeoning and piercing damage. Oh, that puts her down. She's bleeding out. How does it feel to get penetrated? <laughs> she can't answer End of my turn. She's Poor choice of words. <laughs> Angry. Uh, in my rage, I'm going to coup de gras this hag by crushing her skull with my feet. Uh, which one? The one that is currently unconscious. This, okay. this one right here. Gotcha. Uh, full round action and, and she the has damages. The, the knocked out symbol on her. That's what that X means. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the what is it like a? It's an auto automatic crit. critical. Yeah. yeah. Auto. Twenty three damage. So she's got to make a DC 33 fortitude save to, to stay alive. 33, goodness. It's only a, only a nat 20 can really do it. 20, yep. Nat 20. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, she rolled a nat 20. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not bullshitting. And it like did this weird spin like in the air and landed. Just spun. <laughs> she's the <laughs> truth. <laughs> That's how much damage? 33? <laughs> 23. 23? Okay. Yeah. Wow, that was cool. That's it's the first time I've ever seen, yeah, I've ever seen that. That was wicked. All right. uh, are you ready to do it again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Snorri, what do you do? I take a five foot step and I do the same thing by driving my spear through the hag. Oh, all right. Uh, so this is triple damage. Uh, tax. See here. So wait, just to roll the. I guess I'll I'll just roll the attack and just triple whatever damage comes up here. Okay. Maybe we could fight the ones that are still on their feet. <laughs> Twenty-four. <laughs> <laughs> Was not another nat twenty. Okay, so you kill her. So how do you drive the spear through her skull or whatever? Yeah, just right through her heart. Through her heart. All right, there you go. So yeah, so the body twitches and squirms, even unconscious, uh, around the uh, spear, and then it 
shudders and lies still and green uh, seeps out uh, into the floor. I will be right back. About you. All right, end turn. That's a full round action to do that. Yep. Round three. Lucien. Around on the the hag that's still remaining with the rapier. Twenty nine. The hits. Yes. And, and actually, I gotta I gotta change that sneak attack. So and the shadow will animate with it. Um, but I'm add a D six to that sneak. attack. Okay. Attack. Which is another two points. And me shadow envelops it. And actually, I think did I finish? I'm checking to see if I finished it. I may not have I may have forgot to go. Boom! Thirty one for the that's not right. <laughs> Gotta redo it. But it rolled a actually rolled a nineteen. Huh. Plus be 27. No, 26. 14 plus 17 is what it looks like. You have to look at the final row. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. The, okay. the roll is in parentheses. Yes, yeah, so it was a 14 yeah, it should plus be 17. 17. So it's supposed to be like, I think it's an 8, so it's supposed to be 22. And uh, for some reason it has a 17. I don't know why. And it gets a sneak also. <laughs> so it gets 1d8 and it gets a 6. So five okay, plus so eleven points and another right and another D six for it. Oh, so okay. add that. That's the first attack. And so and then the second one right here again. Ooh, roll a one looks like. Yep. Yep. Roll the one. So we won't do crit fails uh, on this one. So just, just a miss. Okay. Miss a miss. Yep. All right. In turn. All right. Boys pulling out all the stops for my anime shadow. No, will you call? You tell your girlfriend to call these hags away. I wish she was here. Hmm. <laughs> She's probably one of these hags. <laughs> She's not much to look at. I'll give you that. I thought okay. Sn Snorri would say something like, "Yes, she's a girl. Yes, she's my friend, but she's not my <laughs> girlfriend." <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so casting defensively, she uh, activates her ability that whew, suddenly she's gone. Ooh, invisible. Or she could have teleported, perhaps. Oh, yeah. But she's no longer. On my turn out, there. I will try to spell craft it out on my turn. Okay. Five foot step, Crenshaw coming after Snorri. They're mad that you spurn. Uh, Elect a lot to these, these names are hard to say. Uh, they are. I'll be glad when we get back to Vic. Vic. <laughs> when we get back to Vic Board here. <laughs> Just where you can pronounce it, right? Yeah. Okay, so you take a bite. <laughs> Uh, is it 20 or 21? 20 total. Okay, you take a claw, and the last claw misses. Six points from the bite, and four points from the claw. Alright. Mythandir. The good Mythandir. Dragon Slayer. Do those things have uh, low light vision, or something like that? The um, the hags, the hags have, have dark, dark vision. Dark vision. Yeah. 
I think oh. the Cruncher might too. Dang it. I'm not sure. I'm going to reload my gun. They do. They have they have dark vision, low light vision, sand. Okay. Angry. I... Were you going to say something else? Oh, I just want to repeat. I'm going to reload my gun and end my turn. Yes, I am going to obliterate this cat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys have been paying attention to the cat and starting to get some good rolls. <laughs> but yeah, I don't blame you taking out uh, the halves. Yeah, that the strength hag. drain is no joke. No, and their spells as a coven is no joke either. Yeah, so... Yeah. Hit, 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 hit. Everything hits. Okay. So how do, you how do you, how do you Game take out? Hit. Yeah. <laughs> how do you d demolish the, the Crenshaw? Uh, I go for a, a really powerful kick and it just splatters across the floor. It's like a... It's like a kicking a salsa can or something. <laughs> Arcing the Finnish flag. Very good. Snorri. Uh, I'm going to take out a scroll of sea invisibility. Oh, I'll do a spellcraft check to see if that's what they did. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Let's see here. Spellcraft. Oh, shot a one for a 14. Nice. <laughs> yeah, invisibility. Nice play, play. Okay. Uh, I'll take out a scroll of sea invisibility and cast it. Scan around. I'll do a perception check. Now, is it possible that the Ark of the Blood caught the hag as she was invisible? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> if she was standing there. <laughs> But she was not standing there. Um, hold on a second. Let me see. I don't know if that provokes or not. Oh, oh using a scroll. Yeah, it definitely does. Okay. All right. Well, so yeah. So that provokes. Okay. Uh, because she's right there. Aha! That saves me a scroll. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You saved me 75 gold pieces. Um, and she hits you. Okay. All right. I'll do a sudden block. Oh, oh nice. Aha! Ching -ching! That forces reroll, right? All right, so she had 19 yeah. on the first one, 19 on the die. Second one, a 10 on the die. Okay, so... Uh, that's good. So it's going to come down to modified AC because that's still 23. Um, yeah, it's still a hit. Okay, yeah, it's a good try. So but it's still a hit. Uh, and does. Uh, you still get an attack against her. Oh, okay. Oh, very good. But yeah. I do or you do? Uh, if I was there, I would take it, but since I'm not there, you can do it. Okay. It's either me or uh, you. Adjacent. Okay. Well, yeah. My melee attacks suck. But we'll see. So you're going to yeah. take seven points from uh, from the claws. Okay. And a four to two save. save. And eight yeah. is, yeah, okay. she just deflects that. <laughs> All right, All juicy right. one, you must stay. Four to two saves. 22. That'd be so you have no new, power over me. New battle name. The uh, juicy one. I am the juiciest. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... You say it very good. I'm going to take a full attack here. It's, nice. I'll drop the, drop the scroll and keep attacking. Seeing as I haven't really done anything yet. 
It's my turn. Spear time. Spear time. Nope. Hasty, hasty. Twenty. <laughs> are you sure? Wait, hold on. Seven. Are you sure you can do that? Because you, uh, uh, cause yeah. you still you I was tried a... to read the scroll, but it got interrupted. Portion. Yeah. So can I still, since I didn't get the spell off? No, I mean you just it just got interrupted. I mean. You were oh, okay. Trying to do it. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Sorry. Alrighty. So I can still move though, right? Yes. All right. I will five foot step to here and say, there's no escape for you, hag. I do not want you, you to should. escape. Are you sure this is not a kink? Juicy. Here, this is <laughs> this is my kink. No, he moves <laughs> behind her. Okay. Yes. <laughs> her breath is hard. Round the four. Lucien. How much damage was that, by the way? You took seven points. Seven points, thank you. A five foot step. My shadow envelops. So she is flank. Rapia. Hasted. Nice. And actually, it should be 2d6. I forgot it's 1, it's 3, plus it's just flanking and a bonus with the feet. So, okay. So it's 5 additional, oops, 5 additional points. So, I'm dying. 14. Okay, I'm just you, gonna... you and your shadow stab her from opposite sides. She yeah. So now, recoils, yeah, the shadow. Trying to. Okay. Grab at the blades and pull them back out of her fatty flesh. But the uh, shadow gets a shot too. I just do it this way. Twenty-three. That hit. That hits. One d eight and three d six for seventeen. It is flank. And it gets my sneak attack bonus. Roll with D6s. So for 17 more of negative energy damage. Okay. Yeah, I can't ever try to find the right sound effect at the right time. There we go. She's still up, but she's hurting. Alright. It's her turn. Alright, well, she likes the taste of Snorri, so she can go after some <laughs> more of that. <laughs> Juicy man meat! Yes! She likes humans, it seems. <laughs> yes. She misses with the first one. And she misses with the second one. <laughs> yeah, she uh -huh. does. Well, well, even in the role play, you know, she thought some were more attractive. Juicy. She was juicy, yes. She said, juicy. Oh, Bucky, you were too skinny, pretty much. <laughs> That's enough flesh on that bone, huh? Crenshaw is dead. Methan deer. <laughs> What did I miss misery? Yeah, same with this. He does not consent. <laughs> <laughs> Nine no, points no, of no. damage. We send you the consent draw. <laughs> Twelve <laughs> points of damage. Is she still up? No, nope, that'll take her down. So, what? Where does your last shot go to take her out? Her, her knee, just okay. to oh. make her stumble. You just blow her knee off. All right, she just <laughs> collapses. Blew the leg off. Of <laughs> yeah, Some green blood spewing everywhere. All right, and with that, that will bring Ooh, this part of that was... the swamp back to a an eerie quiet. That was fun. 
I'm gonna go in her hut now. That was frightening. <laughs> Look around. <laughs> you search her. I go in the hut. <laughs> yeah. She dies. Let's go over here and stop this egg skull. I'm sure she's still alive. She dies. Perception. Trying to say. Let's see here. Juicy. Three healings. Juicy. For me, ten. <laughs> uh, Dump down. Lucian, uh, six. Mm. Did you get hit, Mithander? No. Okay. And um, angry, twelve. So you're back up to max. And I used the wand for. Yeah, it's just my free healing hex. I've still got Mithander I could use. Okay, so you notice several things uh, concealed amid the clutter within the hag's homes. Uh, there's a... You find a scroll that looks magical, um, that detects as magical. You find in one of the small pots, um, you find uh, some more colored paste. Um... You find a, a few small containers um, that detect as magical. Um, and there's a, a small uh, a small bladder full of liquid on uh, on each of uh, the hags. Uh. On the first one that you were speaking to that introduced herself as El Texcatl, um, she is actually wearing a gold ring inset with lapis lazuli stones. Ah, uh, my girlfriend Elle. <laughs> <laughs> what treasures did you leave us? <laughs> so each one of them has a potion. So uh, those are potions of cure moderate wounds on them. Um, in the hut you find, uh, so that's three of those. And in the hut you find two potions of cure light wounds um the the paste and the scroll you'll need to uh to identify um and there's also um a jar that detects his magic um as well beneath uh the table which is detecting his magic and the table yes okay all right. Let's try the. Let's see. Here's my. So knowledge arcana, which is eight. A spell crap. I'm gonna take ten. It would be eighteen on the okay. color paste. Okay. So it is purple war paint. You guys, had, you guys oh, had found cool. some war paint before, and this is a different color. With that, okay. Purple, uh, you are a whirlwind in combat. When a creature you can see within reach takes damage from a melee attack during another creature's turn, you can use an attack of opportunity to make a melee attack against the creature that took the damage. Some war paint. Um, I will. I need to put some of those new items in the. Uh, Unearthed Arcana folder for you guys. Okay. Um, I'll put War Paint in there and uh, the other things. I know you found. So you get a attack of. Things. It's a melee attack of opportunity. Yeah, that sounds like an angry thing. War Paint always sounds like an angry thing. <laughs> Absolutely, unless it's a range attack of something like that. And that sounds like a Mithander thing. Then the eight, same thing, 18 on the magical containers. Um, make a knowledge. Oh, on the containers. Um, you said it's magic containers. Cure light wounds. Yeah, those were the cure, cure light wounds. Oh, those are the potions? I, yeah, okay. I went back over and just told you what they were. What about, wounds. what about the jar? Uh, the jar with the paste, that's the... Um, Oh, you mean the the uh, the jar beneath the table? Yes. Uh, make a knowledge uh, engineering if you have it. Oh, 
have uh when you reach out to like examine it the lid on the jar like snaps open and closed like it's trying to slam on your fingers oh <laughs> do i need to do a reflex or no okay i don't have engineering okay you don't know what it is uh maybe a uh, shaman knows this one you would take more you're engineering. bending down looking at it like you bump your head on the table. Okay. No. And then the table like hops up and bumps you on the head again. Bonk. <laughs> so, so I uh, try to identify the table. 18. Knowledge engineering. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I don't have that. It bumps perhaps, you on the head again. It, it, perhaps uh, Sandia does. It kind of stutter steps forward and stomps on your toes. Don't. Okay, so it, that's everything besides the table and the jars, right? Besides what's on the hags. It misses your. Yeah, head. the hags just had potions and the yeah. lapis lazuli ring. Yeah, that's everything. I'm just okay, so I'll just get away from the table. <laughs> But I do, <laughs> it's like trying I to bump in, into you as you walk away from him. It's like bumping into you from behind. Bonk, bonk, bonk. This table must want to die. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wants to become firewood. But I keep the... Uh, uh, am I able to grab, hold the jar? Put it in a, into a... Uh, not, I'm talking about the the, engi the other engineering thing. When you try to pick it up, it, it like it like tries to wiggle and squirm out of your grasp. You need to make a combat maneuver check to to grapple it. Hold it. Okay. Let's see. Combat. I haven't done that in a while. Back. C M B. B. Okay, you grab it. You snatch it up. And I tie it down for we get identified later. Take a little rope. Tie it up. Throw it into a little sack. It tries to slam its uh, lid on your fingers when you grab it, though, but it's unsuccessful. Conk, 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 conk. Okay, I think that was everything of uh, of interest there. Um, oh, the scroll, you guys. Did you guys roll on the scroll? Spell oh, yeah. I do, I do 18. Just do 18 on it. I'll take 10. Make it fast. Okay, it is... I think that's enough to... I hope it's enough. So I only shot a 16. <laughs> It is a scroll of gloom bind bolts. Gloom blind bolts. Aha. Remember that? Somewhere. <laughs> oh, that's a. I think I have that spell. I think cool. so too. That's one of the shadowy kind of spells. Not mistaken. Okay, so you guys can uh, exit the hut, the haunted hut you were warned not to go into now. Which which way do you go? Uh, if it's getting nightfall, we could probably maybe just rest here. It is dusk, yeah, so it's getting dark. The sun is... Kill the enemy and stay down. in their beds. <laughs> How wonderful. Yep. I'll uh, drag the bodies to the river. Mythic. Or, or just off into the swamp. Point to do the shadow. Actually, I have a spell to just cast it. Well, I don't have it prepared. Uh, shadow sent you greater if we're going to rest here. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to use a um, mythic point to do lesser restoration. Uh -huh. and, uh, so I can. I only had so two points of damage, but... So it gives us basically a full night of someone who can do stand at watch. Just, I'll make a circle around our campground. Uh, and, and a shout of alarm. And it will attack anything that uh, 
seem to be harmful to us if it senses it. I read it says is command to guard where it shouts alarm if it knows anyone approach within thirty feet. Uh okay. where it patrols first walk and the and attacks uh, use a shadowy great sword, 1d12 plus one point every three levels. So, plus two. Okay. Um, well, if you guys are gonna camp here, then I guess you yeah. can you can go ahead and set yourselves up, set up your camp yeah. for the night. Set up. We'll drag these uh, hags and stuff into the swamp, and then we'll set up. Uh, I'm gonna do another mythic point for a, a heal. 2d8. This extent of five. I'll do it again. You guys can arrange your tents or whatever. You should be able to control those. Uh, we should be able to sleep right in the hut, no? Yep. Clear it out a little to. bit. It's kind of nasty. But yeah. Is it? <laughs> Who's okay. going to sleep near the, the I'll, table? I'll, the put, table. I'll, I'll put my hands <laughs> <laughs> We can turn the I table in the swamp. There is a reason why I didn't outside. took the alligator, and there is a reason why I didn't take the hut. <laughs> That table, lucky we're gonna. It doesn't find an axe. In yeah, I wonder, I wonder who has an axe. <laughs> <laughs> when you show it the axe, it kind of calms down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as as with as with unloading hags into the swamp. <laughs> Chill out table. Don't you think we can cook the cat? <laughs> Somebody's hungry, it seems. We might be able to. Cats generally poor eating. I can hunt for us. See what we can bring down for dinner. So is that where you guys are going to set up for the night? Yeah. Okay, so... What's the watch order? Do y'all just rest and let the spell watch for you? No. I'll, I'll take, take the first. I'll take the first or last. I'll take the first watch. I take the last. Okay, I'll take the second. Okay, so uh, it's last watch. Oh, it's like spellcraft. It was, was meant to be survival one. to get some food. Who was on last? Mithander is. Mithander is on last. Ah, okay. All right, so spell. make a perception check, Mithander. And, and I'll roll one for the shadow. Okay. That's the same. Good thing I can see in the dark. Very good. Am I going to search it? Um, You don't need to search it. Shadow didn't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you notice there is a large uh, troll-like figure there on the edge of uh, the perimeter of the camp there, coming up out of the swamp. I say, hey there, how it's going? Ugh. Uh, Org, want to know, why are you in swamp? Tell Org. We are looking for some missing children. You come to kill Org. No, we don't want to kill you. We just want to look for the children that were ab abducted. You come to feed Org. You have food, yes? Yes, we do have food. We can share some. 
Give it that soup. <laughs> <laughs> I've had worse. Do you offer it something? <laughs> Do you offer the troll something? Yes, I offer the troll something. Okay. Do you want to make a diplomacy check? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got a knuckle sandwich for him. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to our crunch barbecue. You guys can make a, a perception check to see if you notice this since you're asleep. Uh, okay. What is it? Is it minus 10 or is it minus, minus 10? I think. It's a minus a lot. We'll search that. Oh, Ooh, nice. I'm not raging anymore. Hey, I think if you get over 20, you know, here. Uh, 23. Yeah, you're that. Okay, yeah, so you guys all hear it. You're sleeping light for some reason. Afraid somebody's going to crawl in bed with you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fourth sister we always have to worry about. <laughs> God. Luna was a hag all along. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so you all, uh, you all wake up and you're you're apparently quite alert. I go, ah, we have this wonderful soup for you. <laughs> and uh, what's left over of our, the crenshaw that we cooked? Mm. I had to go ahead and put it down. Ah, eat up. Make, do you? You probably like a, to eat the hags as well. Do you want to make yeah. a what's diplomacy that? check? Sure. I I'll, made a diplomacy uh, check. I got a twenty-three. Okay. Okay. Perfect. That was just to aid. Very good. Okay. He so he takes the soup and and uh, pulls it to his chest and he says, mm. "Soup, good. Org friend. Mm. Yes, org org see children. Sipatenwa, take children. Take them to Lost City." That is where we're going in the morning. Do you know the way? Hmm. Yes, Orgna way. Very dangerous. Do not want to go into city. Scary place. What about where the uh, where the children might have been taken to? Away from the city, apparently. Mm, no. These these creatures live not in the city, but around the perimeter, perhaps. No, they seek blood for the dark ones in the city. They do not bother Org. They do not want Org blood. I see. They seek the blood of Tewal, blood of people. Mm, so will good. we have to? Org friend. This is good to know you, Org. I am Snorri. And he continues chomping away at the soup. Mm, good. More soup. The uh, the foul sisters that lived in this hut are gone. You're welcome to it. Mm, yeah, sister, scary. Not anymore. They're quite dead. They're moldering in the swamp over there. <laughs> Fortunately, they know no bother org. Or too big for sisters. They like little ones. Hairless ones, like you, Snorri. <laughs> yes, they were quite keen on me. <laughs> <laughs> he reaches out and pinches your stomach. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a little Pillsbury Doughboy. I'll giggle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Do you two need a room? <laughs> no, no, I'm ready to... Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> Ready to go here. Oh, I assure you. In this... the, they go to feed the dark one. Uh, city, bad place. Do not want to go. But I can show you, take you there, the quicker way. We'd be in your debt. Well, come. We will go when you are ready. So okay. this would have been so, during the the last watch. So you last guys watch, you I would just need to finish up your last bit rest. of rest then. All right. And he'll 
Yeah, he, I mean, he'll finish eating whatever's left of the soup if you guys let him. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and yes. And did she this... have, wasn't it something besides the soup before the soup? Or... She had some wine, too. Oh, the wine. Yeah, Get yeah. some wine. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe don't tell him about the wine before he's going to guide us to the city. <laughs> yeah. He can handle it. We yeah, have, we'll tell, we'll tell him when we get there. We'll tell him when we get there. By the way, that hut had some wine in it. <laughs> I trust him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the uh, Drunken Troll Adventure Tour. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be so much fun. <laughs> of course, Snowy doesn't like fun. No. Snowy's against See? fun. <laughs> Exactly. Oh great! Here comes the fun police. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you guys right. are, are ready to set out, the uh, the troll who identifies himself as Org O R G uh, will lead you. Dot org. Mm. Lead the way, Org. He's he says uh, he finds you all very curious. You no look like. Others in Tewal. Where from you come? Ah, uh, we come from the larger island to the north, where Balka is that uh, town that we come from. Hmm. We come from Deep the land of the ice the and snow. <laughs> okay, so so he leads you to uh, the south from uh, from where the river bends, um, and you see the uh, the uh, swamp gives way to uh, mountains rising uh, below, and he leads you to what you believe to be the entrance to the valley. Come, we have a long way to go. All right, you can follow along. Let's see if I've got a picture ready here for you. Uh, of course not. All right. Let's throw one together right quick. There you go. Mysterious Valley. So mysterious. This is all... Oh, now it's loading. <laughs> the vast stretches of wilderness... Oh. The vast... Sorry, I was just doing the mysterious valley. <laughs> 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 the vast stretches of wilderness that lie outside the realms claimed by mortal kingdoms are rich with danger, excitement, and fabulous rewards. Unfortunately, they are also rich with harsh terrain, miserable weather, nagging illness, and genuine discomfort. When someone goes off the map, it helps to have some idea of the destination. Despite its obvious practical use, the magical compass still remains something of a mystery. There is no question it points to a specific destination, but as you have traveled, the terrain has become more and more rugged, you now find yourselves in the heart of unforgiving mountains. We'll uh, trust more to our guide orc than the, the compass. I'd probably keep us in a rough direction. Right. Yeah, so he leads you uh, to... Uh, to the valley entrance, and uh, you're you're basically uh, going through a mountain pass where you can see across the valley, and he points okay. to the city in the distance. There, you can see in the image. Mm -hmm. Now, Org, what is the best way to negotiate this valley? I'm assuming you don't want to come any further. Yes, this is as far as I want to go. The valley is. Uh a dangerous place. Have you been through here before, though? We could use your wisdom. 
yes, in the uh, the northernmost part of the waters is where lies the village of the Sapatenhua. But Org Org scare. They will try to to kill Org if they see Org. But there you see rising in the distance the Forbidden City. They go to offer blood to the old ones. The old ones offer many secrets, lost knowledge, ancient powers, to Sepatenhua. Ah, Org scared, just speaking of them. It's all right, Org. We take it from here. Yes. Uh, do you know of any uh, secret paths or anything, any quick ways through the valley to the city? If you come to the river, you can follow it. From the south, you follow north. You will find the city. If you find it in the north, follow it to the south, and you will find the city. And also, in the northernmost ways is where uh, the Sipatenhua village lies. It is best to uh, be careful there. They do not see you. But there are other things. Mighty creatures that walk on four legs. Here in the valley. You must take care. Can you, can you describe any of those creatures before you go? He says, yes, they are big like the size of two trolls. And they have mighty horns that pierce ten men. Too All strong right. even for Org. Well, Org, uh, enjoy your new hut. Uh, there's an enchanted table. It's a bit unfriendly at first, <laughs> but perhaps uh, you could become friends with it. Um, <laughs> it was good to know you, and perhaps we will see you on the way back. He says, yes, be safe. Snore E. And you too be safe, Org. We will see you soon. <clears throat> okay, so he leads you basically right into uh, the valley entrance there through the safest way possible so you don't have any encounters up to get you to this point. And um, because you could kind of see down and across the valley there, you kind of have an idea of where your destinations are. Okay. All right, so this is the city right here? Yes. Okay, and where are we right now? Like right around here? Yeah, no, in the yeah, north. Yeah, where Munir oh. is there, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry, I didn't see that. Oh, okay, Alrighty. Excellent. All right, we'll start making our way. Um, and what's the name of the city? The Forbidden City. <laughs> They've called it a few different things. Yeah, just Ancient City, yeah. Forbidden City. Ancient, okay. Um, That's the name of the Chinese restaurant that I go to around here. <laughs> <the> Forbidden City. <laughs> <laughs> Mintok called it the Valley of the Old Dubai. Okay. Have I heard of anything like that? I don't know if, I don't know if I have history. You can make a knowledge history check, sure. Yeah, let's see here. See if I put any points in that. Probably didn't. Yeah, I did one point. One measly point. <laughs> 21. Nice. I believed in that one measly point. <laughs> 21. Okay, let's see. So, um... I think I remember this name from one of Old Man Yuri's books. I had to turn to reading that because he would not teach me spells. <laughs> old miser. He was a difficult old man. It's an old goat. We should have left him to rot. 
So we you, should have introduced him to the hag. <laughs> you you do remember some things from um, both from what Wolf talked about and also Old Man Yuri. He did, he did talk of a, a lot of things on the island. This is one of the things he expressed interest in. And you remember him speaking of ruins in uh, the Valley of Old Divai that were very very old. Um, and he told you the ruins were dangerous. Um, so, you know, it's best to stay to the jungle. Um, and according to legend, it's haunted by a large slime creature that's always hungry. And uh, Mintok told you he had kind of run into something and turned back when he came to the city, but he didn't really elaborate on it and mm-hmm. uh, explains why he never went back. Um, but you know from uh, what Old Man Yuri told you was that... Uh, the, there are magical stones at the edge of the fields surrounding the old city that actually uh, keep the uh, slime creature um, inside its uh, perimeter. Okay. Are they the same stones that they sacrifice on? No. No. These are more like uh, protective stones. Okay. Um, and no one knows uh, where this creature came from. Uh, but it's never tried to leave this valley. Uh, but it's known to uh, go down to the lake and uh, and uh, drink and uh, try to uh, capture prey there from time to time. Okay. They don't know. Uh, there's no mention of what culture this might have been from. Yeah, the Arcadian. Well, I mean, that's the Arcadian legend of what's going on in the area but yeah they don't know no from and from your role you have an idea yeah okay all right well uh i'll make a survival check to try and pick out the best path as we head down towards that and let's get on okay um yeah, that's a good roll okay so <laughs> Yeah, it's really up to you. If you go to the south down this way, you can completely circumvent the Sipatenua, which are on the northern side. Right. Um, there's a field connecting the two in the lake down here at the perimeter outside the city. Um, Our so goal, though, is to get the child back from the Serpentua, right? Yes. But uh, the troll told you for sure that he thinks it went into the city. Because into the city yeah okay because they're he thinks they're part of the blood cult okay so let's uh let's go around this way then why don't we go to through the forest shadowy there isn't it mm. yeah we could <laughs> i could actually yeah if i think i could pick my way through the through the jungle that might be we just go directly as the crow flies mm-hmm <laughs> So All right, speak. Well, it's up to you. Yeah, we'll go this way. Uh, sure. I'm sure it'll be really safe. <laughs> <laughs> I should be able to navigate it. We could use the cover of the forest and try to emerge right about here. Quietly cross the river into the stones. Try to defeat the slime monster. <laughs> or just avoid it. Okay. Uh, can somebody mute their mic. Something is uh, blowing in the That's mic m- there. It's my hair dryer. Uh, oh, just... oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I have no it hair. Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um,. All right, so you're making your way uh, into uh, making your way towards the uh, forest first. So go ahead and uh, move a few. Yeah. Yeah, I'll move to. Okay. So uh, the narrow passage opens into the sunlight in a, a much larger valley extending for several miles between sharp mountain walls to either side. Ahead, the mountain pass descends steeply into a thick jungle that seems to cover the hilliest part of the valley. 
A fantastic waterfall cascades down the right wall of the valley, leading to a river that winds its way across the center of the valley floor like a blue snake. In the valley's center stands a small city with five very tall buildings surrounded by scores of lesser structures. The towers shine like glass, and the largest one in the center seems to be made of purple metal. Terraced fields surround the city on three sides. The air is pleasantly warm, as is the earth below. Steam rises from the ground, still damp from a recent rain. Okay, so um, as the uh, the trees of the jungle grow closer uh, within sight, you uh, make your way there. But in order to do that, you must first go through here. You guys might not be able to see. Let me find you. It's like a picture of the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the fake little those, <laughs> like. <laughs> We'll have to go to work soon. Oh, okay. Well, we can we can wrap up with uh, we can do a cliffhanger for this encounter yeah. or something. That would be yeah, start us with a cliffy. Yep. Um, I was just thinking that. You guys can't hear it anymore, can you? No, no, it sounds um, good. Right. Okay, so uh, you guys, guys, set yourself up in your uh, order as you're making your way through the through the valley. So the jungle is to the south, to the bottom of the screen. I'm assuming the story's leading the way. Who's leading? Uh, me and Snorri can be in front. I'll have my cleaver out for cutting through the jungle. Take the rear. Yeah, I, uh, I can't move my guy. Maybe I'll do a refresh. I'll do a refresh. I pulled you off the uh, off the character list. There should it should have worked for you. What's going on with that? Okay. So yeah, that's all it was. Just needed a refresh. That Swing okay. up your foliage. Okay, so you guys are... Uh, you're making your way towards the jungle ahead of you there. And... Uh, you hear something hiss. And Lucian feels something sharp stab him in the side. Oh, great. And you look around and you see nothing. Ooh. How many points do I take? Well, let me roll and see if they actually did. You actually got hit with the... Because that was mostly flavor there. Okay. Uh, 21, 20. 21 versus your... Yeah, flat-footed. Uh, so that would be, yeah. Yeah, it would hit. Ooh, dice helping you out. Seven points. Okay. Seven. Out of yeah. 53. You get stabbed by something and uh, no no form can be detected, yet you sense a force of hulking malevolent, malevolence. It's almost undeniable that there's some kind of creature's presence right behind you. Um, yes, um, of um, um. <laughs> yes, of course we should go into the this forest and you can guide us and See all everything. <laughs> I guess that's the cliffhanger. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> and here is where we shall end for this week. 
All right. Hey, 